So we're back on the Kawasaki cams and my uh, internet um, friend Malk of Lincoln, he's got a good channel if you want to have a look at it, Malk of Lincoln, uh, he made a suggestion just as sort of a double safety thing. I know there's time marks on the on the uh, camshaft but he suggested that you could just mark the chain and the make the chain and the cam just as an extra safety precaution uh, when you come to set the timing back again and I thought that wasn't a bad idea so we'll be doing that and then um, as you can see the uh, the bolts are all loose here so I'm just about to disassemble the um, shafts so it's recommended that you keep the bearing caps and uh, bolts um, marked so they go back on the cam uh, exactly where they came off so I just bought this uh, little plastic container you can see luckily it's got um, eight sections in the middle and I've just chucked some bits of marked paper in there exhaust inlet one two three four so that I don't make any uh, mistakes and get confused at all about what what came from where and it cost me a yeah, like I said I think about three quid from the uh, from uh, shop down the road also it's quite hard to um, make a mistake with these valve uh, with these uh, cam caps because they're marked um, just here look with the number and an arrow point the direction uh, that they're they're supposed to face on the engine I don't know if you can see that very clearly there because the lights a bit bright but um, yeah so you get the drift they're all marked up So the shafts come out really easily. That's the inlet out. That's what it looks like down there. So, and I know it's a really obvious thing, but just you know, so that we're not, we don't do something really stupid. I've put the bag. Uh, I've marked a bag with IN for inlet and EX for exhaust, and I've put the cams in the bag that says the right, the right cam for the right side. So this is the inlet cam. Just a simple thing, but you know I know how stupid I can be sometimes. So, just trying to make sure I don't make any mistakes. So here we are with the cams out and the chain suspended on a bit of wire. And uh, now I've got to pull these buckets out, and I've seen it done with a little sucker of some sort, like. Um, on a valve grinding tool but I hadn't got one of those anyway what I had got was uh, an egg timer with a little sucker cup and uh, an old pen so let's see what we can do with that so here we've got my painted uh, valve bucket removal tool so we're going to find out if it works in a minute should do though looks like it fits um, the right sort of size So whether it will work or not, I'm not sure, but looks like it does. How about that? <laughs> Works a treat. So here's a little tip I've just figured out for myself. So when I took this uh, shim out, you couldn't read the writing on it. And um, so I just took a bit of um, marker pen and um, coloured over the area where I thought it would be and uh, I, you can't see on this camera I think because the the image quality is too poor but it just takes up enough of the ink to show 250 um, yeah so just w drew on it and then wipe you know colored it in and wiped it off and it left behind just enough to read so uh, the the shim just sits in that little holder there on the top of the valve and now uh, I've done a couple. The little um, homemade tool works a treat. Just pop it on and pull them out. It's working great. And um, just going to work across all of them now. That'll probably be it for tonight. And then um, we'll see how we go. So what we've got here now are all of the cam bearing caps the buckets and the shims and then I've made a table here showing 
um, for each uh, cylinder and shaft the clearances that were um, there before I before I disassembled it and then the shim sizes and then you have to do some sums that uh, maybe I'll try and explain in another video to decide which shim you need to put in but I think the general principle would be that where a clearance is too tight obviously you need a thinner shim uh, so that's the basic idea